double-crossed me, didn't you, Sirocco? But you didn't get away with it. I'm gonna bump you off. I'm gonna fill you so full of lead, you look like a sieve. You dirty... You dirty what? You dirty rat. Oh, gee whiz, Mr. Hobart. This guy has called somebody or other a dirty rat on every page of this scenario. I don't care. The director asked me to write it an added scene, and it's a swell spot for him to call this guy a dirty rat. He'll have to cut it out someplace else. All right, it's your story. Say, what's the matter with you? Don't you like this yarn? Certainly, I liked it when I saw Clark Gable in it a year ago. Are you insinuating my stuff isn't original? Oh, no, I'm sure it was just a coincidence, Mr. Hobart. Oh. You dirty rat. What? You dirty rat. That's I... the last line you dictated. No. Mr. Well, DeClota wants to see you on the bedroom set. How do they expect a man to keep three stories in his mind at the same time? They're driving me nuts. This guy wants every line in the script changed. All right, tell him I'll be right there. No. Where was I? Oh, never mind. I know. Uh, the dirty rat, the dirty rat, the dirty rat, the... Oh, go on, Annie. Go ahead. I'll give it to you later. Dirty rat. Same old dialogue. Can you help listen to the right the dialogue? Yes, here it is. Uh, you thought you'd double-cross me, didn't you, Sirocco? But you didn't get away with it. I'm going to bump you off. I'm going to fill you so full of lead you'll look like a sieve, you dirty rat. And they expect me to make pictures of it, stuff like that. Do you know what he says? I'll tell you what he says. Here, take this down. He sticks his gun into Sirocco's stomach, and he says, Here, take that, Bluey. That's it. And he says, take that, Bluey. No, no, no. The man doesn't say Bluey. The gun says Bluey. The gun says Bluey. Yes, that's better, isn't it? This is uh, Mr. Near's set. Our biggest director. Oh, interesting. Mr. Near, Baroness Baritska. How do you How do? do? Baron Baritska. It's How a pleasure, do? Mr. Near. Pleasure is mine. And Mr. and Mrs. Peters. How do you do? It's so thrilling to see a great director at work. They are just puppets. I mold them like clay in my hands. Yes, yeah, they respond. I can get anything out of them I want. All right, Mr. Uh, pardon me, please. Frank, chair, please. Very, very Make yourself a home. Thank you. All right. Clear the set. We'll have a rehearsal. Right. Are you ready, sir? I'm ready for an hour, Mr. All Mayor. right, let's get organized. Come, come. Either get out of there with that broom or put on a makeup. It's off a whip, Simon. Get on a wire. No. Where'd we come in from? From that door that I told you. I didn't hear you. He didn't hear me. You heard me. You heard me. You heard me. Yes, Everybody sir. heard me. Hey, but you, I didn't hear you. You didn't tell me he was coming through the door. What do you want, a special delivery letter? Uh, take that 18 on the What that mean? Uh, he just wants to be friendly, that's all. Oh. All right, right. Come on. Oh, darling, Sonia. Sing for me, because this is a happy life. Hey! Highlights off the table. First, get yourself off the table. Hey, tip up. Who, me? Oh, I'll read your speeches. Tip that 18 up. Sure. Sure. Don't forget, Marge. Annie and I are coming up to your house for dinner tonight. You bet you are. Oh, darling Sonia, sing for me because this is the happiest day of my life. Someone spread a rumor that was... Say, did I have a hat when I came in? Do you mean to say you don't remember whether you had a hat when you came in? Well, did I have it in my right hand or in my left hand? Did he... Did... Annie, did he have his hat in his right hand or his left hand when he came in? He didn't have a hat. You didn't have a hat like I told you. Just as I thought. Uh, tell me, my dear, do you have to keep track of everything like that? 
hats and coats and gloves and things of that sort? Oh, yes, they'd come in with the wrong suit on if you didn't watch oh. them. And the director doesn't know the story from one scene to the other. Really? <laughs> oh, I see. You just have to know everything, hmm? It must be very fascinating to work in pictures, isn't it? What's your name? Annie Foster. Rudolf Baritka. And this is my sister, Bernice Baritka. How do you do? And Miss Moore. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? All right, we commence again. Someone spread a roof. Would you mind putting down the breakfast and giving me a few notes? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Someone spread a rumor that was met as humor. Now I'm just a lonely wonder. Enough, enough. Well, what's wrong with that? That was lovely, beautiful. You should have had Frederick Marx. Is that so? Ah, you heard that, eh? That you heard. All right, places. We'll make it. All ready, boys? Ready, All right. Mr. All ready, Mr. Ready, camera? All ready. Good. How much does she get for that? Five thousand a week. Wow. Quiet. 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 Roll them. Oh, darling Sonia, sing for me, because this is the happiest day of my life. Someone spread a rumor that was meant to...
Get in. Don't break your neck, honey. <laughs> Man, let's put on the feed bag. I won't be a minute. Better make it snappy, Snooks. The ice cream's melting all over the pickles. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, hey, Marge. Look, you put your heel through the steak. Oh, gee, I thought it was your foot. I just want to run in and leave my paycheck. <laughs> leave her a paycheck. You sure take advantage of that, kid. Sure. Wake up. Hello, Pop. Hey, Annie, wait a minute. Well, never mind. Just now. Here you are, Mom. Oh, I, uh, I won't be home for dinner. I'm going out with Bill. What restaurant you going to, Annie? Oh, Bill's bought some things, and we're going to, uh, uh, cook dinner over at Marjorie's apartment. Why, Annie... I don't think you should do that. Oh, Mom, why not? It's nice to have a change sometime. Annie, you know how I've been feeling. Now, if you don't want it to go because you don't want to wash the dishes afterwards, what? I'll wash the dishes. Everybody around here knows that I never complain. Honestly, I've just been feeling perfectly miserable all day long. Hello, Bill. Hello, Marge. Hello. Hi, kids. Where's Sis? She's in the house. Well. Hey, cut uh, it out. That's dinner. So what? You and Annie are going to have dinner over at your place. Uh-huh. Can I come along? What do they want you along for? That's right. What do we want you along for? I suppose you'd wash the dishes. Huh. Do you know any other funny jokes? Goodbye, everybody. Annie. To help you out, all right? Yeah, thanks. Andy, uh, then uh, uh, how much, I, Dad? A dollar. Well, here, take two. Thanks, Andy. I'll try and get it back to you right away. Yes, I know you always do. Sometimes. Well, I uh, lately. Bye. Say, sis, do me a favor, will you? Lend me a couple of bucks till Saturday. You mean to say your paycheck's gone already and you never gave Mom a cent last week? I bought a couple of tickets on the Irish sweepstakes. I had to. All the fellas were buying them. Oh, gee whiz, Arthur. I just had to give Dad two dollars. Thanks, sis. I promised to take Marion to a movie tonight. Oh, sis, if you aren't going out tonight, can I wear your new dress? No, you cannot. You know darn well I haven't even had it on myself yet. Now, don't you dare touch it. My heart's on me down, dear, and my heart was sad. Can you imagine getting 5,000 bucks a week for that? No, nope, not for that. Say, if that dame's a singer, I'm Sarah Bernhardt. Sarah Bernhardt wasn't a singer. <laughs> Did you know that was a real baron and baroness sitting beside me on the set today? Oh, you mean that guy with the window pane stuck in his eye? Oh, Tom, to meet you. Pictures are so interesting, don't you think? <laughs> and they like them. Oh, they mean something, Bill. They're not going around pretending they're the real thing. <laughs> Which is the finest slice of bologna I have ever seen sliced. Just like Sarah Bernhardt. Oh. He's got something important to tell me. Mm -hmm. I gather that. Well, <clears throat> in that case, uh, would you pardon me? I have a little errand to attend. Thank you. Hey! Where are you going? Got to see a guy about an Airedale. Has he got a pedigree? <laughs> he has an acute mustache and baby blue eyes. Uh-huh, and he works in the soda fountain down on the corner. And he woos me with malted milk. Protect yourself at all times and no hitting in the clinches. <laughs> da, 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 da. Goodbye. Goodbye. Da, 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 da. Well? Uh-uh, you said you were going to tell me something. Oh, Bill. Imagine. 
Imagine five hundred dollars. I never dreamed they'd pay that much for your idea. Pay for it? Why, honey, that's just an option on it. Till they test it out in their experimental laboratory in New York. Oh, you better cash it right away. Supposing the idea's no good, they might cash it. Well, I like that. This light of mine will save the studios millions of dollars. Oh, gosh. <laughs> mm, this means, Snooks. Well, I think it's time we got married. Oh, Bill, we can't. Not yet. Well, why can't we? We've been thinking about it for the past two years. Now, with this check as a start, why, well, we can go ahead and do it. I get frightened at the very idea of taking a step. <laughs> oh, that's foolish. Long engagements are the bunk anyhow. Oh, Bill, we can't get married. It's impossible. Why is it impossible? I can't with the family. Snooks, dear, can't you see what that family's doing to you? They're ruining your whole life. They're making a slave out of you and giving you nothing in return. You're wrong about that. They love me very much. Hmm. They love you in every cent you make. Oh, Bill, don't be like that. There's more to it than just the family. What, for instance? If we get married now, it'll just mean exchanging one drab little house for another little house just as drab. I don't want to grow old like Mom and always be unhappy and discontented and complaining all the time. There's something more to life than just that. Nice things. Things in good taste. You see what I mean, don't you, Bill? Yeah. I know. Barons and baronesses. No, it isn't that. And yet it is, too. Well, some Airedale. <laughs> One of down the drugstore on the punch board. The very first punch. He's got a swell set of uppers. <laughs> uh, let's go to the movies. It's all right with me as long as there isn't any we make. <laughs> a fine pair of patriots. Mom, get the nine o'clock show. Jiminy Christmas. Morning. Morning, Henry. Morning, Henry. Fishing again, eh? Look at that one. Eight feet long. Well, <laughs> I bought your sweepstake tickets. Annie let me have two dollars last night. That makes the five, don't it? That's right. Them lucky numbers. I hope you win. What you gonna do with the money? I'm gonna buy myself an $80 deep sea fishing tackle. Ever do any deep sea fishing? No. I ain't never fished at all. You're going to need a boat for deep sea fishing. Well, then I'll buy one. How much did you say you could win on these? Up to 150000 Well, then I'll buy myself a yatch. <laughs> Boy, you look as if you'd been under the ether last night. Oh, shut up. You know it, Donna, yourself. That's no way to talk to your sister. Oh, stop picking on the children. My head is splitting. I've just got to get that prescription filled again. Oh, I wish you'd stop taking that stuff, Mom. I'm sure it's not doing you a bit of good. Oh, it eases the pain. Mom, you ought to take the baths. That's no way to talk to your mother. Well, I, I was pretty lucky down at the pool room last night, and so I bought two tickets to the Irish sweepstakes. One for me? Sure, uh, one for you. Yeah, Pete, Pop. You've got two already. That makes four the family has. Why, Arthur, have you been spending your money on sweep tickets? Sure, all the fellas down at the office were buying them, and one of them's for you, Mom. Oh. He never forgets his mother. Do you, dear? 
Boy, can you imagine me winning $150,000? Is that what you get? If your horse wins the race. I'm going to take a trip around the world, and maybe I'll buy an interest in some brokerage house and settle down. I'm going to Paris. I'm going to study music and dancing. And who knows? I may even marry a marquis. Oh, Len Stewart would get the air, huh? And how? Well, I spend my money trying to get back my health. I read in the Sunday paper the other Sunday about the most wonderful doctor in Vienna. Land sakes, Mom. Ain't there enough good doctors in the United States? Oh. You finished, Annie? Yes, I'm not hungry. I know what Dad would do with his money. He'd spend the rest of his life out on the Pacific Ocean trying to catch the biggest fish that ever got away. Yeah, but it wouldn't get away from me, son. <laughs> You can pick up a yacht mighty cheap these days. your mother. $50,000? Well, what do I get? I told you that you'd get 
$2,000. But you said I get $150,000. That's in case your horse wins. Then don't I get anything? You... You... Uh, get the blush and come on home. Oh. Bill. I want to... In the sweepstakes. Oh. Deal here. This is what I will give you for your ticket. $25,000? And the check. $25,000? The check is good, it's certified, it's as good as milk. But what if my horse doesn't come in one of the first three? But that's the chances I take. But, but I still don't understand. Annie. This gentleman is willing to gamble $23,000 that your horse comes in among the first three. Ah, you see, he understands perfectly. Well, it seems to me if Mr. Burns is willing to gamble $23,000, my horse must have a pretty good chance to win. Ah, but you see, I'm a gambling man. And I think I'd be very foolish to sell. Annie, $25,000. That's a clear profit of $23,000, sis. You're just throwing that much out of the window if your horse doesn't win. Oh, Henry. And they try to make her understand. I'm not going to sell. Well, you know best. But if you change your mind, you've got my car. Goodbye and good luck. Excuse me, please. Why didn't we get another keg? We'd have ordered another keg. They never would have gone home. 
we left it up to Annie, we wouldn't have any beer. Well, this wasn't my idea of celebrating in the first place. Phil and I had planned to go out dancing, and we would have if Sally hadn't ruined my only evening dress. That's what you did. Yes, you little brat. Well? Mother, did you hear what he said? I beg your pardon. Who were you calling a brat? Your daughter, the selfish little mutt. How dare you? You mind your own business. Keep out of our family affairs. This is my affair, and this is my family. Or well, it's going to be someday. Because Annie and I are going to get married. What? Yes, that's right. I think the sooner I get her away from this family, the better. Bill! Annie! Tell me it isn't true! Oh, so you're all in a panic now, aren't you? If Annie left you, you know darn well you'd have to go out and earn yourselves a living. Say, so you can't You're talk just it. a bunch of sponges. Parasites. Taking the best years of our life and giving her nothing in return. But, Bill! You can't talk to my parents like this. Oh, honey. You keep your hands off my sister. Go back to the studio and place around where you belong. I'll bet you hadn't mentioned this money. Phil! You were going to hit my brother. Honey, this is the showdown. You've got to choose between me and your family. They're playing you for a good thing. Can't you see? You can never have any happiness here. We can never have any happiness. I think you'd better go. Henry, throw him out! Well, yeah. uh, Come along, young man. Well, and don't you ever dare to come back, either. Oh, Dad. I love him so. I guess that by the way you talk to him. <laughs> Turned down an offer like that. We've had five chances to sell the tickets. The last offer was for fifty thousand dollars. My goodness! But we're not selling. I think it would be very foolish. Well, you know the old saying: a bird in hand's worth two in the bush. There's another. Their heart never won faint lady. Shh, everybody. Hello, folks. Stand by for a really extraordinary treat. We are attempting to pick up the English shortwave broadcast of the Grand National Steeplechase, run on the historic Aintree course near Liverpool in England. This is released over a national network. This race is of particular interest to our listeners owing to the large number of sweepstake tickets held in Canada. Gee, I'm all loose, Simple. Oh, I am too. I can hardly talk. Oh, put it down, honey. Don't be so nervous. Oh, I wish Bill was here. Oh, Marge, why do you have to talk about him? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Anne Stella Strangely, is giving you an eyewitness broadcast of the running of the Grand National. It's a great day, crowds of people, <coughs> it's a good big field, a beautiful sunny day, it's a magnificent course, shimmering in the sunlight. Why do you say shimmering in the sunlight? Oh, gee, I hope he isn't a mother. A what? A mud horse. Oh, no, he likes shimmering in the sunlight. I hope you're right. They're lined up in perfect formation. They're up. It's a magnificent start. They're all in a bunch. Here they go. It's hard to see who's leading. They're too far away. I can see Commander's running third. Hellman's running second. Here they come to the first jump. They're over. Hellman's still in the lead. Commander's still running. No, he's fourth. Another jump. Here they come. They're spreading out. They're running in a bunch for a while now. Now they're all spread out. There's a fall. A man down. He's hurt. Ah, oh, here's another jump. They're spread out. Thurman's running first, a riderless horse, another man down. And here they come into the straight. Here they come, Thurman's leading by a full length. Commander's running for all he's worth. The jockey's riding him well. He's beautiful, all water jockey. Oh, he's running up. They're running neck to neck now. Commander's catching up to him. Commander's catching up to him. They're running nose and nose. Commander wins. He's won. Well, it's a little roast. 
Oh, I'm not going to marry anybody. Oh. Just think. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars. How much is that? Boy, me for that trip around the world. I'm going to catch the Empress of Britain at San Pedro and then on to the Far East. I'll be able to get back my health. At last, I'll be able to have the specialist that I've needed for 15 years. Can you imagine going to the Far East for a year and the Casino de Paris? Well, no wonder you came back at all. Well, everybody in the neighborhood was here. You should have heard the yell when Commander won. Wait, it's real, sis. Gee, I almost died. Say, sis, you know how soon you get your money? I want to go down in the morning and make my reservations. What for? You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere, and neither is Sally. And you're not going to spend a lot of money on fool doctors. Well, what are you going to do with the money? I'm going to spend it the way I like. It's mine. I'm going to quit my job and enjoy the money. Hmm. You're going to quit your job? Just when you're getting along so well? Yes, I'm going to quit my job. I've been pounding the typewriter ever since I got out of high school. Now I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to have a lot of nice new clothes and a place to myself. Hmm. And what's to become of us? You wanted me to sell the ticket for $25,000, didn't you? And you were sore because I didn't do it, weren't you? Well, that's what I'm going to give you. $25,000. Twenty-five thousand, and you're going to keep a hundred and twenty-five thousand for yourself. Yes, for myself. Twenty-five is all you're going to get. I'm going to turn it over to Dad, and he can handle it any way he wants. You're a swell sister. Well, I've been a swell sister for the last time. Now I'm through. If anyone had ever told me that a child of mine would act like that, oh. How'd we get here? Don't you like it? But it's so darn big. We'll have to get used to it. see the kitchen. Skip it. Well, there's only one thing missing. Bill. Bill. Forget it. I wonder where he went. I'm not interested. Oh, that's a grand, I like pink, though. Now, don't you like oh, pink? Oh, Mr. Oh, isn't yeah. that? You'd have it lovely. Too dark. model I had last year from Paris. Oh, no, madame. This is quite a new model. Oh, yeah. Really? Isn't this lovely? Yes, that's very lovely. But I don't prefer that in black. Well, madame, you'd look well in most anything. How do you do? How do you do? You don't remember me, do you? Well, your face looks rather familiar. I met you at the studio on Mr. Nair's set. Oh, yes. You're the little girl who knows everything. Aren't you any more at the studio? Miss Foster is the young lady who won the prize in the sweepstake. Oh, really? How thrilling. Yeah, $150,000. Oh, really? You remember Miss Moore. Yes. Well, how do you do? I don't suppose that seems like very much money to you, though. Well, I don't know. It's rather pleasant to have a tiny little sum suddenly drop in one's lap. <laughs> Miss Foster, have you decided what you want to do about the gown? Oh, yes, I'll take that uh, green brocade, too. Oh, and the black wool with the lamby collar. How would you like oh. to have them sent? On approval, please. We're very glad to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, 
hello, Rudy. Do you remember Miss Foster who was the night out in the studio? Of course, I How do. How do you do? How do you do? And Miss Moore? How do you do? What do you think? Miss Foster won the Grand Sweepstick Prize. Indeed. That calls for at least a little celebration. Would you like to have a cocktail with us? Oh, we'd love to. Splendid. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Do you like this country, Baroness? What kind of cocktail would you prefer? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, what kind of a cocktail was it we had that time that was so good, Marge? Gin. <coughs> uh, if I may make a suggestion, what would you say about Bacardi? Or even better, champagne cocktail. Oh, we always like champagne cocktails, don't we, Marge? Uh, please, for champagne cocktail. Uh, Miss Foster, it must have been a great thrill to listen uh, to this race over the radio, you know, 6,000 miles away. Oh, it was colossal, so exciting. Oh. Uh, but how does it feel to be a rich woman? Well, uh, we really don't know yet. <laughs> But you must be very, very careful. There may be many people who will try to relieve you of your fortunes. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> very careful. Isn't that a good-looking young man? Sort of. Excuse me, I, I, I've got to do something. I forgot. Hey, Bill. Hello, Marge. Oh, see you, old West. I'm glad to see you. Where you been? I've been out of town. Mm-hmm. Did you quit your job? Yeah. Well, you sure look pretty nifty. An uncle must have died and left you a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It's all counterfeit. <laughs> Say, at least you might have stopped by the table and said hello to Annie. She seems to be doing all right. Well, why don't you come up to dinner some night? She'd love to have you. Thanks, Marge. I don't think I'd fit in. It'd be so nice to see an old face around once in a while. You know, these new people she picked up, they seem to have taken an awful interest in her all of a sudden. Don't worry. Annie knows how to take care of herself. Bye, Marge. Be seeing you. It's lovely. Simply gorgeous. Don't you think so? Of course it is, my dear. Perfectly lovely. But don't you think it's rather a lot of money? I assure you, lady, this ring is a very great bargain. Miss Foster will find an excellent investment, aside from the pleasure she derived when wearing it. I think I'd rather have this bracelet, though. That's more sensible. I'll give you a check for it. Thank you. It's your chauffeur, madame. Bring me. Oh, Annette, dear, I will return those dresses for you. There you are. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Where are those packages? Oh, they need to be tied. Marie! Oui, madame? Uh, Marie, will you help the Baroness chauffeur with those packages in my bedroom? Oui, madame. This way, please. Hmm. I inquired about him and engaged him. Excuse me, perhaps I'd better help them. Hey, Mad? Oui, monsieur, may... May what? Marie, will you get those other packages, please? Mm -hmm. What are you doing here? Tying bundles, Miss Foster. Why must you take a chauffeur's position? For advancing myself to the fringe of society. It's a scheme to annoy me. Oh, I assure you, you're mistaken. My sole object is to earn an honest living at congenial employment. And this employment is most congenial. Excuse me, Miss Foster, my boss is waiting.
Permit me, madam. Thank you. Shall I help Carolyn? Enright can manage. Isn't he handsome? If you like that type. Oh. Well, shall we lunch someplace? Oh, luncheon is ready here. I thought we could drive off somewhere. Couldn't think of it. <laughs> I suppose that must be Rudy. I asked him to meet me here. Do you mind, dear? I expected him. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. You are the beginning of the day. Oh. <laughs> Lunch is ready. Of course you're staying. Are you hungry? I'm starved. Besides, I deserve a good lunch. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Rudy is taking me down to my broker. He has located a perfectly marvelous buy. I wish I could find something like that. You know, I have an awful lot of money in the bank doing absolutely nothing. I beg your pardon, Miss Foster, but this uh, package fell to the sidewalk and broke. Put it down, Anne Wright. Yes, madam. You don't need your chauffeur, do you? Of course not, my dear. Bill, you can go to lunch now. Oh, he needn't go. He can eat with the servant. Thank you, Miss Foster. Uh, you don't mind if I finish some business talk in a hurry, dear lady? A thousand apologies. Uh, darling, you will have to give me this $80,000 check. Is that as much as you want to go in now? Here it is, Rudy. I have it ready. Thank you. You saw the broker this morning? Uh, yes. The entire block of stock amounts to $100,000, but he could dispose of the rest easily. Is it a terrific bargain? Oh, my dear. I expect to make 25% within a couple of days. Well, what stock is this? It's Tacoma Power and Development Company. Oh, it's a marvelous buy. Do you suppose that you could get me the remaining 20000 Well, I'm sure it could be arranged. Well, I'll write my check for you before you go. Splendid. We will still make a businesswoman out of you, <laughs> and a very charming one. Fourteen hundred. Okay. I got two hundred and fifty. I got a yard and a half. Forty bucks is all I got, and I don't like to give it up. I don't like it either. Why should we give her five thousand berries? We're lending her five thousand dollars. That's her profit on the first transaction. What makes you so sure she'll buy more bonds? What do you think I am putting thirty one hundred for? Am I an amateur? She's going to put 100,000 berries before we're through with her. Well, I'd hate to lose that 40 bucks. Oh, uh, put on a new record, will you? Oh, are we going to stay up all night long arguing, or is it a deal? Don't look like such a bright idea to me, either. You talk that dame into buying a lot of cheap stuff, and I could have sold her a diamond. And that was very good business, too. She will buy a dozen of rings before we're through with her. Oh, maybe. Well, is it the gold? Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah. 40 bucks. Say, Annie, I wish you'd call off that date with his royal highness. Why should I? He's cultured, well-bred, aristocratic. <laughs> Bill's worth a million of him. I never hated anyone so much in all my life as I hate Bill Enright. Say, Bill Enright isn't hard to take. He'd just have to reach out, and there I'd be. Miss Foster? Yes? Your father is here. My Good father? Good Annie! Oh, my God! <laughs> Mr. Foster, oh... Gosh, I'm certainly glad to see you. Oh, you look marvelous. How are you, anyway? Why, oh, Dad. Annie. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, you sweet thing. Why haven't you been up to see me before? Well, I, I didn't want to bother you. Say, I've got a million oh, things know. to do. Now, don't you go away. I want to talk to you. Oh, it's so good to see you again. <laughs> Come over here and sit down. I've been pretty lonesome without you, Annie. Have you, Dad? Yes, I've been hoping that you'd drop around all night. I could hardly blame you after what the rest of the family said that night. How are they? Oh, pretty good. How's Sally? Did she get a lot of nice new clothes? Yes, yes, but she sure ruined that dress she had on last night. What happened? Oh, the doctor spilled some disinfectant fluid on it. The doctor? Yes, the doctor down at the receiving hospital. The receiving hospital? What was she doing at the receiving hospital? 
Oh, Sally went along in the ambulance uh, after the crash. What crash? Oh, Arthur ran into some people with his new car. Oh, Arthur has a new car. Well, he did have, but this morning it looks like a concertina. Well, was he hurt? Not much. Were the other people hurt? A little. Well, how much? Oh, about $15,000 worth. $15,000? Yes, Mom's taking it down to their lawyers this morning. That's about the last of our money. Do you mean to tell me that the money I gave you is all gone? Yep, practically. I ain't spent a cent on myself, Annie. Honest, I haven't. Arthur's bought a new car, Sally's bought new clothes, and then Mom's bought new clothes, and she's taken a bunch of treatments down at that new hospital downtown. It just looks like hundreds of dollars is going every day. You didn't even get a new suit, did you? No. And I'll bet you didn't get that fishing tackle. No. They badgered every dime they could get out of me. I'm so sick of it all that I, I don't ever want to go home. Well, you don't have to. You can just stay here. Stay here just as long as you like. You mean it? Mm, of course. Hello. Good morning, darling. Oh, good morning. There is something quite important I would like to talk to you about. Also a little surprise. Would you like to have luncheon with me in about uh, half an hour? Is Yvonne there? Uh, no, they left quite early. All right, Rudy. I'll be ready in about uh, half an hour. Goodbye. Look, Dad, I have to go out, but you just make yourself to home. I'll tell the butler to give you anything you want. <laughs> Who's that, the fellow that let me in? Oh, yes, uh-huh. Well, how about some lunch? Or would you like a cocktail first? A cocktail? Can I have one of them mantinis? <laughs> of course you can throw a mantini. <laughs> <laughs> You've sold my stock already? Yes, and here is my little surprise for you. Five thousand dollars profit. Why, Rudy, that's wonderful. And if you will give me $100,000, I will make you much more. But that's not what I wanted to talk to you about, darling. Why should you worry about money in general? Let me take care of it. And you. This is the proposal. Is it okay? Oh, of course. Thanks. Tell me, Bill, you don't feel quite at ease in this uniform, do you? Perhaps I need encouragement, Baroness. Yvonne is the name. Yvonne? <laughs> Come here. You can't come in now. We gotta talk business. Things are getting hot. Yeah, when's the big cleanup? Tonight at the girls' party. Well, uh, how do we go? Is gents or what? What and Graham? Graham, I think. Was nobody. You're married to Hollywood? In love with anybody? That's a funny question. Why? What about Annette and the other little girl? You used to work with them, didn't you? They put on too many airs for me. Too bad somebody doesn't take that door of hers away. <laughs> you may have your wish. And that means? Would you like a vacation to Europe? Europe? Mm-hmm. Going to take the car? Taking you. 
One always can find a car. <laughs> oh, that'll be all, Lord Floyd. Hey, where's the onion? Uh, you may retire. Won't you join me in a bit of wine and uh, a spot of hamburger? Oh, Marge, the most wonderful thing has happened. I'm going to be a baron. What? You're not going to marry that long drink of water. <laughs> I don't even believe he's a baron. Well, he certainly is. He showed me a picture of his castle. in Jugo... Jugo something uh, or other. With his name on the door? Well, no, oh, but that proves it was his castle, all right. Air castle. <coughs> oh, for the love of Pete, Annie, you don't love that guy. I think you're going crazy. Oh, Marge, I don't know what to do. I'm so miserable. Mm -hmm. I just want to get away from everything and everyone. And Bill? Well, a lot he cares about me, spending his time night and day with that Yvonne. I... This morning you're wanted on the telephone. Oh, those traveling men. Hello. Who? Oh, how'd you know I was here? No, she's out. No, her father isn't here. No, don't come up. Don't I... Oh. Holy cat, Danny, it's your mother. She's looking for your father and she's coming up here. This is the last straw. Ah, don't you worry, honey. I'll fix her. Where is she? Where's my daughter? Are you Miss Foster's mother? Yes, yes, of course. Where is she? I must see her at once. Fanny, darling. Oh, dear. What, Mother, what's the matter? Oh, something so awful has happened. Your father's left me. Oh, he says he'll never come back. He says that he's true forever. Why, it's all right. He's here. He is? Oh. Thank heaven. Here, take this. Oh, oh my dear Annie. Everything in the house has gone wrong since you left. And you have no idea what's happened in the last 24 hours. Oh, yes, I have. Dad told me. He did? Oh, of course. Did he tell you what he intended to do? Oh, I think he plans to stay here for the present. Really? You have room for it? Why, uh, yes, there's room. <gasps> My darling, how lovely. Then there's really no reason at all why I can stay too, is there? <laughs> oh, dear. Whom did you wish to see, please? Yes. Oh, sis, gee, I've missed you so. Oh, I'm surprised you haven't been over here before. Oh, sis, hi, you, honey. Oh, sir, how are you feeling? Oh, swell, just a few scratches, you know. I heard about oh, that. Oh, boy, pipe the liquor, me for a drink. Isn't it ducky? Oh, my children, you haven't heard the half of it. Father is here. Oh. No kidding. And Annie has plenty of room, and she's out to all to stay here for a while. Oh, <laughs> marvelous. Oh, well, Mother, I didn't well, tell you, Sally. Well, Let's go yeah. home and get some things and come back for dinner. Just one big, happy family once more. Say, just a minute. You're not coming here for dinner tonight. Annie's entertaining, and you're not going to butt in if I can help us. What's the matter with us? Aren't we classy enough? No, you're not anything enough. Oh, if I had my... Please don't. Annie, oh, really? Your taste in companions doesn't seem to improve. Oh. Or what if? We'll be seeing you. Come, children. Cheap little hairdresser. Cheap little yeah. hairdresser. Don't you, oh, you think we don't have no other place to go? <gasps> oh. oh, I could scream. I'm telling Annie if they come up here tonight, I won't be responsible for what I do. Marie. Oh, the party's off. What? After spending all that money? Oh, Annie, you're... Marie, will you pack my things? Pack, madame? You are going away? Yes, I'm leaving tonight. I'll be gone for a long time. But, madame, what is to become of my husband and myself? Well, don't worry about that. I'm giving you and your husband a month's salary. Wait a minute. Oh, Annie. Oh, don't do it. Not now. Everything will straighten itself out all right. And, gee, honey, it might need a chance for me. I might need a baron or a duke or a count me out or something. Oh, well. All right. Oh, Marie, skip the packing. Yes, madame. Oh, honey, you should see your new dress. The one I mean, the one you, the one that has a trainer has bows in. Oh, it's marvelous. 
you're going to look like a dolly somewhere, a big family. Hello? Rudy's gone and he took his things with him. Yes. Keep your eyes on the foster girl. Don't let her go. Why, the dirty rat. He's trying to beat it with a dame and get her dough for himself and ours as well. I will be right over as soon as I've changed. Well, hello. Well, how well you're looking. How are you? 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 Oh, Annie, come in, stop. Oh, oh, Annie, 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 Annie,
Irene and the Baron are planning to elope. I don't know what you think about it, but I know he's no good. So oh, well, she's only doing it because she saw it. You, she's no more in love with him than I am. Sorry, Marge, I can't see anything I can do about it. No more than that. Sure you can have the job. 
I've hired and fired four secretaries already. Gee, that's swell of you, Mr. Hobart. I work harder than I ever worked before. <laughs> now, wait till you read the new story. It's a combination of the old homestead, Monte Cristo, and One Night of Love. Sounds great. <laughs> You'll be crazy about it. Okay, I'll be looking for you. <laughs> all right. It's all set, Marge. I got my job back. Well, what am I supposed to do, cheer? Are you still looking for that money? Well, if the cops didn't find it on the guy, he must have hidden it here someplace. Oh, forget it. I don't want any part of it. Well, maybe you don't, but I do. Boy, it sure breaks my heart to have to give up this place. And you know, I'm going to miss Murgatroyd. Oh, Annie, it's going to be tough having eaten a kitchen again. Did you call for a taxi, ma'am? Do these go first? Did you lose this? I found it in the hall last night. The money. <clears throat> uh, would Madame be interested in some phony bonds? By the way, this is phony, too. Oh, well, give it to me. In the meantime, accept this genuine two-and-a-half carat diamond been paid for by Mr. William B. Enright, general manager of the Acme Light Company. Come up here, Snooks, and take your medicine. <laughs> 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 